welcome to another episode of The Trainwreck, also known as episode 21 of the Power Moose Podcast. It's just me. Uh, good chance it's going to be just me for a while, unless I can uh, grab some guests, because Duncan and our schedules are a little overlapping, and uh, we won't be able to record together for a little while. But that doesn't change the fact that there is a podcast that needs to be done, so uh Again, welcome to it. Uh, Have I done anything of note this week? Nope. Not a single thing. I mentioned last week that I wanted to play the Futurama mobile game, so I've been dicking around with that for a while. uh, It's a mobile game. Oh, by the way, you're going to hear my damn cat again, because I'm in my apartment. Uh, Yeah, the Futurama game... Uh, Worlds of Tomorrow, I think it's called. It, uh, I mean, it's your city building mobile game of like, hey, build this building. It's going to take you 200 hours. Check back in next week. It's, I mean, it's funny, I guess, because it has the original writers and everything involved, and it's got the voice actors involved, and it's, I mean, it's new Futurama content if you really like Futurama, but uh, it's, it's the bad kind of mobile game. It's the one that discourages you from playing. It's one you're just supposed to sit down and, you know, click a few buttons and then come back in a few hours. It's not my thing. I'm probably going to keep playing it just for a little bit longer to see if it see if anything changes. But uh, I've got a good feeling that will not be the case. But, hey, if you're into those city building games like the... Uh, the Simpsons one, I don't remember what it's called. It, it's a lot like the Simpsons game, um, which would make sense of being, you know, Mac Raining and all. Outside of that, what did I do? I went to see Baby Driver. That movie is pretty damn good. Um, it, it's not the greatest movie of all times, but it's pretty enjoyable. It's basically an entire movie. Well... Not the entire movie, but a large portion of the movie is, like, action, and even not action, just, like, mundane shit, uh, timed with the soundtrack of the movie. So if you really like that trailers have been doing that lately, then this movie is for you. And, I mean, also, it's Edgar Wright, and he, he hasn't let anyone down in a while, so. And once again, he, uh, he didn't let anyone down with this one either. Been just playing more... Kingdom Hearts 2 yeah that's a that's a video game not really much else to say about that and I wish I had done more shit this week because with with no Duncan here oh boy this podcast is going to fly by but I guess we'll just move right on to the news I guess at a shocking three minutes in oh jeez uh so a few weeks ago, I I think it was our E3 podcast, I talked about being impressed with Battlefront 2 and maybe wanting to get it because uh, the multiplayer looked fun and the story's canon, which is, you know, how you sweeten the pot for me. But I also mentioned that there was a card system that they didn't explain and... I was a little worried about what that might mean. Well, it came out uh, over this week of exactly what the card system is. And, oh, oh boy, if they don't change that, I'm not picking that game up anymore. Uh, In fact, nobody should. Well, I can't say that. Just don't play the multiplayer. Maybe the campaign's... If the campaign's really good, maybe I'll still get it. I don't know. But at the same time, I don't want to support what they're doing. So... Basically, the game has loot crates. Pretty pretty common these days. Whatever. Not a big deal. But the loot crates will contain buffs, which is not good. Um, because it means the game is... Shut up, computer. So basically now the game is pay to win because you can just keep buying more crates and get more buffs. Um... If you uh, so I have here, if you ignore the microtransactions, 
you're rewarded with buffs the better you play so yeah the better you're doing the more buffs you get which is kind of backwards um because that means the better you are the better things you get which means you'll get even better when if you're doing poorly and could use the buffs to kind of balance the playing field out a little bit you just get punished which means after less than a month this game is going to be unplayable for anybody new because everyone who has been playing will all have the buffs and you'll go into an online match and you'll just get destroyed because you don't have anything and then you'll keep not getting anything because you'll only be going against people with these buffs and it's just dumb because I mean I could give it a pass if you couldn't buy the buffs I would still think it's dumb but at least then it's not by definition play pay to win it's play to win which is you know fine but because you can buy these crates and then get these buffs yeah it, the game is now pay to win for the Battlefront 2 multiplayer and I mean that's just garbage but so fingers crossed about the campaign I know uh, I think this or, no it's not visceral criterion I don't fucking know I should have wrote it down I wrote I, I mentioned it before go back and find when I said it of what studios doing the the single player campaign for battlefront it, it's it's a good studio so uh, there's hope but it's clear that despite them wanting to fix all their problems with Battlefront 2, at the end of the day, uh, it's still an EA game, so they're still going to do this kind of thing. So, good job, EA. Unless the campaign really shapes up, you have, you have lost a sale, sir. And then, got... Future Rama news, which if I was good at my job, I would have tied this into when I talked about playing the game. But so, in a very vague Reddit AMA, uh, David X Cohen, who is uh, I actually don't know what his role is on Future Rama, but you see you see his name in every episode in the credits. I don't know if I don't remember if he's a producer or a writer or a co-creator or what. But anyway, he you know he's one of the one of the Futurama guys, and he was doing a Reddit AMA, and uh, I wrote his exact quote here, because uh, obviously everyone was just asking him, hey, are we getting more Futurama? And he said, there are no new TV episodes or movies in the pipeline at the moment. However, here and now I promise a different avenue of exciting Futurama news this summer. No kidding. Which is a, a weird thing to say, but I, I think he just means I'm telling the truth. Keep our expectations modest. And you'll be pleased, Possi possibly. I'm not allowed to say more, or I will be lightly phasered. So, if I had to take a stab, I know what I would want it to be, and I would consider that keeping my expectations low-ish, is I would like a game. Because I, I always, I mean, I missed the Futurama game back on the uh, like PS2 and Xbox, and it might have been on GameCube, I have no idea. Uh, I miss that game, and I think those kinds of games are like kind of fun. Like <clears throat> they're not top of the line by any means, but I really like the, the Family Guy games, the the like Simpsons Hit and Run. Uh, so I would really like to see something like that. But if I was a betting man, my guess is with the assumed success of the Rick and Morty comic book is we're probably gonna get a comic book which you know that's cool I might read it we'll see if, if that is it um, I find it unlikely that it would be another phone app where Worlds of Tomorrow just came out um, you know tell, tell me what you guys think it is I, I think the best bet it is a it is probably a comic book. I, if I would to, uh, because really, if it's not a movie, it's not a TV show. I, I mean, I guess they could be playing coy, and it could be like online webisodes, but 
I, I doubt that's what they're doing. And I, where they're saying a different avenue, and to my knowledge, there's never been a future on a comic book. That's probably what they're gonna do. But if you are upset that you can't watch Futurama and are looking for something else to watch, well, a uh, whole bunch of anime news, which, hey, <clears throat> I can't talk a ton about because resident expert Duncan is not here. But uh, basically, Fooly Cooly Season 2 and 3 were announced. I, I'll i be honest, I should have looked into that more because it kind of confuses me. Unless the announcement was just, hey, we have two more seasons planned. It's weird to announce two seasons at a time. And also, Fooly Cooly is, like, years old. I don't... I'm sure people care still. Uh, but I can't really comment on much more than that. Because I have never seen it. Like most anime. Um, I mean, the, the anime news that I care about is that... Uh, Trigger announced uh, a few new shows, which, if I'm going to watch an anime, like, I I've watched most of what Trigger has done, and it helps that they've only been around for a few years, so that is very doable. So they announced uh, an original sci-fi show called Darling in the Frank XX. Strange name, but I'm sure it'll be good. Or I hope it is anyway. Um... If I were to take a stab at it, it would be similar to that one Trigger show I've never watched. <clears throat> and I think it's probably their least popular show. Wouldn't it be helpful if I knew the names of things? Oh look, I have a fancy computer directly in front of me. It's almost like I can look it up. Let's find out what that show was. Uh, Trigger Studio... I guess it's Studio Trigger. My bad. Oops. Um, Kiz Niver. Uh, was the show I was thinking of. If I were to take a stab at it. Uh, it's going to be something like that, which... Uh, I mean, I'm sure people watched it, but when you compare it to everything else they've done, like uh, Little Witch Academia or Kill a Kill, like, it... That show did not have the same level pop. Uh, then they announced Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad Gridman, which is one hell of a title. I know Gridman is a thing. I think it's Ultraman related. Uh, Lightning Superman. Uh, let's see. Let's, pull, let's just read about Renner. Japanese tokusatsu, uh, giant hero series created by the producers of Ultraman. Okay, so it's... This would be last non-Ultra hero. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. I guess it's in the same style of Ultraman, but it's not really related. Then we've got their what they want to be like their next staple series so their next uh kill a kill like their next big thing is uh something called promare there was some artwork released had someone with some kind of giant firework missile hammer this cool poster um looks like a neat art style it looks like a departure from everything else they've done which i'm all down for new art styles they announced more Inferno Cop, I think. Um, I know they released uh, a little short at Anime Expo of Inferno Cop meeting Donald Trump. And uh, that was a real treat. So I'm under the impression that there's supposed to be more. But I actually didn't double check that news. So... Uh, a second season has been announced. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm not wrong. Uh, Inferno Cop is a... It falls apart near the end, I think. And I'm a little worried. Because I, I, I... For the most part, I liked Inferno Cop a lot. It's a real goofy watch. You can watch it in one setting. You can watch the whole series in one, in one setting. It's not very long. It's like 40 minutes for the entire series, I think. 
but when they tried to sort of recreate the success and humor style of Inferno Cop, they put out uh, Ninja Slayer, which I thought was not very good. Uh, now, granted, I did not give it its like a, a fair shake. I only watched an episode, but it did not grab me the same way Inferno Cop did because it it seemed like. Inferno Cop seemed like a joke. They were like, oh, well, we need to put out something. Here's a dumb, goofy idea, so let's just do it. And then Ninja Slayer was them trying to recreate that dumb, goofy idea instead of just having their own unique, dumb, goofy idea. And I'm worried that Inferno Cop Season 2, instead of being, here's more wacky adventures of Inferno Cop, it's let's try to make Inferno Cop again, which they failed. And I understand that me rambling about this is totally confusing but i think some of you have probably followed uh, either way go watch inferno cop it's a good time especially even if you just watch that anime expo video when he meets donald trump um because that has some pretty cool cameos um and then we have the castlevania in quotes anime i don't really know if it's considered an anime i think everyone's been calling it an anime but it was made uh, in the West. But it's it's sort of the uh, I mean it's anime style. You look at it and you're like, oh, is that an anime? Yeah, animation is heavily influenced by that of anime. So not technically anime, but uh, but it's anime. So, I mean, that's all out now. It's way shorter than I thought. I I heard uh, the announcement of the Castlevania series, you know, whenever it was announced a couple months ago. Uh, I did not know it would only be four episodes. Now, uh, good news is it was renewed. So many people watched it the first day that it was on the same day uh, renewed for a season two, which is great because, minor spoilers, it ends in a massive cliffhanger that you're like well I hope there's more and uh, if if Konami is smart which I don't know how much they actually have to do with this in fact other than saying okay take Castlevania I actually don't know if they have anything to do with this because uh, the the original pitch for the show was I mean, they were working on this for years. Um, no, I, I didn't know about this for years. I just recently was looking into it. And it, the guy who made this, uh, Warren Ellis, who is he's one of those guys who he's just done a lot. You've probably heard his name before. I mean, he's wrote uh, or created a ton of comics. He did all of those. I mean, this isn't his biggest claim to fame by no means but he did all of those uh marvel animes back like 10 years ago like wolverine blade uh can't remember what other characters got one he did those but his biggest claim to fame is probably dead space um and he's currently doing a comic that i stopped reading only because it's a little too thick and i want to just wait until it's finished and then pick it all up uh called wildstorm but it was pretty good and so he wrote the Castlevania series, which I had, you know, like I said, I watched it all. It was pretty good. Uh, boy, did they not fuck around with them wanting it to be a, like a more mature show. They, I mean, there's a, a few scenes that I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. Like I had like children ripped in half. And I was like, oh man, they're uh, fucking around here. But yeah, so it's, you know, 22 ish minute episodes, four episodes plow through the whole show or the whole season i guess in in one sitting it's i guess this was originally supposed to be a movie which its length makes sense now uh because it's about movie length now i actually think this would have made a poor movie i think the episode format weirdly helps it but uh back pedaling off that is uh, what a surprise is Ubisoft went and talked to the producer or one of the producers anyway 
uh, actually the uh, the executive producer to be exact, and was like, "Hey, oh, I guess he, yeah, no, that's all he did. Executive producer, and was like, "Hey, can you make us an Assassin's Creed uh, anime?" Which you know what, I. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I think I am... I think I'm done with Assassin's Creed. I... I mean, that new Origins one looks like they're changing things up, and I haven't played Assassin's Creed since Black Flag, so, like... You know, maybe? But I just... I just don't care. I don't think I've ever cared about Assassin's Creed. Because with every character being a new protagonist and each as unlikable as the last. I mean, the reason why I kept going was in the first ones they had the the, the Desmond Miles story and connected it to the real world. And I thought that stuff was kind of neat. And uh, I hope I'm not alone in that. I don't think I'm alone in that. But they kind of got rid of that in the last few games. So, uh, yeah, but, it's, I mean, there's countless Assassin's Creed games. They just released uh, their, fuck, I, I should have checked the name of it, but they released their Assassin's Creed version of a Fallout uh, Vault Shelter or whatever that game was. It's the same idea. I have not tried that game because that is not my thing because I didn't play the Fallout one either. But it keeps getting Assassin's Creed keeps getting comic books and novels and uh, I mean it had a had the live action movie it's had the animated movie it it I mean I I guess Ubisoft sees that it's still making money so they're gonna keep keep making them but does anyone really care about Assassin's Creed anymore? You can't, I mean, Ezio had three games, and that was probably, you know, the top tier of Assassin's Creed. Now, my personal favorite is the unliked Assassin's Creed. Nah, I was going to say three, but it's a real toss-up between three and four. But I really like the setting of three, but four is also very pretty. Uh, so really, I don't know. They're all, they're all good. They're all good except for one. Any Assassin's Creed is the right answer uh, between two and four. Uh, outside of that, you're wrong. But, like, I don't care about getting merch because with each game, the merch changes. So it becomes valueless, kind of. I mean, not really. But... Yeah, I don't know. They need to do something with that series. If I were in charge, it would be just... Just put it to bed. Who cares if it's selling? You know what else would sell? If you made a new IP. Or, you know... Or go back to Prince of Persia. You didn't hear that from me. Shit. But, uh... You know what? If... They get some good people involved i'm sure i'll watch the assassin's creed uh, tv thing it certainly can't be worse than the live action movie and i went to theaters and paid real money to see that piece of garbage oh i should add that while a very low bar i think the castlevania series might be the best video game adaptation of something like i was was pretty happy with it like is it amazing no it's good and also i don't remember if i actually finished the sentence but if konami was smart they would with the popularity of this make a fucking castlevania game it, i mean if they were smart they'd already been working on one so it releases while people still give a shit about this or maybe release it alongside season two because 
I've never personally cared about Castlevania. I think some of the games are really neat, but I never cared to buy them or play them myself because the heyday was kind of before my time. I only had really... Uh, no, that's not true. Because Symphony of the Night came out totally when I was playing games. But I was just a dumb kid, so I didn't know any better. But, yeah, they, they should do something. Uh, hell, even just remake Castlevania 3, because the, um, basically the, the animated series is basically just Castlevania 3. So, yeah. If they were smart, they would have already been working on a game. But uh, I don't really have any hope that they are uh, doing that at all. Um, but, 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 but. Right. So, nah, I'll save that for when I have someone to talk to about it. It would seem a little... I can't shit on my own opinions, so... I'll save that topic for later when I finally have a, a guest who gives a shit. Um, so similar to the move in uh, that Xbox did with their Game Pass, I don't know what the fuck is called. I don't pay enough attention. But that thing where you can play Xbox One games on PC or uh, Xbox 360 games on PC, and then the a few months ago, or fairly recently anyway, uh, made you be able to play Xbox One games, which, you know, oh shit. That's pretty cool for people who have computers good enough to, in internet, strong enough to stream games. Or, I think you stream them. Maybe you download them. I know PlayStation you stream them. Which is not great, but I think as long as you have a reasonable internet connection, it's not that bad. Because my internet is not great by any means. I have... Uh, of the options I have in the city, I don't even have the strongest one in this city. And this city and, hell, even this country doesn't have, you know, fantastic internet speeds. And I've used PlayStation Now, and it works pretty well streaming a game. Like, I didn't... I'm sure if I was playing a fighting game, I might uh, complain, because I'm sure it is off a few frames. But I just played, like, some generic action or platformer games, and it seemed fine. Uh, but anyway, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because even I was pretty impressed with the fact they started adding Xbox One games to that service, whatever it was called. Well, lo and behold, uh, PlayStation Now, which has been around for a couple of years now, uh, is now adding PS4 games. They are, they're adding 20. Now, I'll be honest, these are not great games. Now, the PS3 games they have added and the PS2 games they have added, and I, I don't know if they have PS1 games. I imagine they do. They have a strong lineup. I mean, they have the what's what of uh, every other game console. But their PS4 lineup is a little weak, and I think it's because if it was fantastic, well, then why buy games anymore? Just wait a year or two, and they'll come out on now for relatively cheap. So... They added uh, Killzone Shadow. F I didn't write down all 20 like I did with the NES Classic. I just wrote down some of a note. Some of the games on here I had never even heard of. So they uh, added Killzone Shadowfall, which is a pretty good game. God of War 3, which is a good game. Saints Row 4, Reelected, which is a pretty alright game. Resogun, fantastic game. Helldivers, great game. Acubus Beat, which is a pretty new game, honestly. It's only like a year old. And Nidhogg. Uh, and even that list of, like, me picking the creme de la creme from this list is not like the strongest list in the world so that tells you the quality of most of these titles but I guess uh, because I don't have a PlayStation Now account I had to look this up uh, it usually goes for about $20 a month which I mean that's not cheap by no means but if you had no intentions of buying new games and you didn't really care about playing the new hotness $20 a month for unlimited PS3 games. I mean, it's not unlimited. It's 450 or something. Uh, that's a fucking good deal. That's a great deal. Um, so usually it's $20 a month, $45 for three months. But currently, because they just added all these PS4 games, they're 
having a sale that if you you can buy a whole year for a hundred dollars which is actually pretty good honestly um if i didn't have more than enough games to play currently i might actually do that hell i still might i'm sure there's tons of ps3 games i could go back and give a whirl because i missed a ton everyone missed a ton if they said they didn't they're lying to you uh now the big the big hotness of the week everyone's talking about well i guess there's two and they were kind of uh, brought up on the same day so first uh actually because i don't have as much to say on this i'll go into uh there was a splatoon 2 direct this week and uh i will take this time to formally apologize to any and all Nintendo staff and anyone who worked on that game who is listening. Now, I know the answer to that is uh, there's nobody listening who works at Nintendo. And, and if there is, tell tell me, because I'd like to. I'd like if I could be wrong about something, I'd like to be wrong about uh, someone like that listening. But uh, I said shortly after Splatoon 2 was first revealed that it was basically just. Splatoon 1, but here's a new weapon. Uh, and basically just accusing it of it being a port. Now, they have shown so much stuff and added new characters and, like, the graphics are, like, a pretty significant jump. Like, it's not night and day, but they are, without a doubt, side by side much better. So, I will have to say, uh, Splatoon 2 looks, uh, it looks good. What can I say? Now, am I saying that because I've been thinking about buying a Switch? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably why I am saying it. But, yeah. For, for once, I won't be a sour boy, and I will actually give credit where credit's due. Splatoon 2 looks like a, a, a dandy a dandy game. But, uh, oh, also, Marine and Pearl. Perfect. Uh, Pearl basically being a little gremlin and uh, Marina being uh, the greatest character in video game history. But the other characters that were shown off this week, or other character anyway, was uh, it, it finally happened. We knew it was coming. There's been hints for months. Uh, and then the hints stopped and they thought maybe he wouldn't come out until November, but he's out now, at least on the PTR. And at this point, y'all know who I'm talking about talking about Doomfist. He's finally out, and oh boy, I haven't been... I don't know if I've been excited about any of the new characters in Overwatch. Like, Anna's cool. And I play her from time to time. And Orisa's growing on me, especially recently. But, am I missing someone? Has someone else been added since then? I don't want to be wrong. No, there's totally... There's gotta be. Alright. Hold up. Hold up, I gotta see if I'm wrong. And I'm sure if there was a third character, y'all are screaming at me. At who the new, who the third missing character is, but uh, oh, fucking Sombra, Jesus Christ. Uh, I do like Sombra, but Doomfist, oh my God, he is. When I heard about his abilities. I was like, meh, you know, sounds sounds pretty cool. But then when I saw them in action, I was like, I need to play this man. Now, uh, just to go through his abilities if for some strange reason, no one has heard of them. And the only reason I'm going to talk about this is because I think they're really cool. Is uh, his, his primary fire is he has like these uh, knuckle shotguns on his ungauntleted hand. And that's basically his main fire. He has no reload. It, uh, He just gets bullets over time. Uh, and I think it might be nerfed because it seems like they're said to be like a, a short range attack because and not do like a ton of damage because like that's not what he's meant for. He's, he's a very ability focused hero. But... It seems to have a pretty decent range and do a pretty decent amount of damage. 
but he's got uh, a rising uppercut, which is what it sounds like. And then you can kind of pair that up with a seismic slam where he just uh, smashes it to the ground uh, and it pulls people towards him uh, for more, you know, punching and shooting close range. His uh, alt fire is a, is, a, is a rocket punch, and Jesus Christ, if you fully charge that, you're just flying through the damn map. It is, I mean, he is very similar to Tracer in that regard, except, well, think Tracer's dashes, but cooler in every way, and also they hurt people. And isn't it just cool to just punch people in the head? And then, uh... His alt, I kind of wanted something a little better. Uh, his alt is meteor strike. He, uh, he jumps up into the air and just uh, comes down and crashes on the ground. And it knocks people down and it hurts them. So it's basically just Reinhardt's alt, but with an added ability to teleport, which makes it pretty good, but... If I'm gonna criticize Nintendo for using the same abilities, I'm gonna have to wiggle my finger at Blizzard. <clears throat> I think they could have done something else with Meteor Strike. The teleport thing is cool, but but Overwatch, I don't know. It gets like I don't know a quarter of a pass because it has way more heroes than arms, so I won't be too hard on it compared to Nintendo in reusing abilities. And, oh, Jesus Christ, I am both out of news, and it's only been, like, 35 minutes or something. Oh, boy, I did not think this through. However, luckily this week, I have questions that I have not looked at, so it's entirely possible that I don't have questions, because I have not vetted these, and if I look at them and I don't want to talk about them... Well, then I'm not going to talk about them. Even though I have said many times that I will answer anything, that's not true. So let's take a look at these questions. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. There's. <sighs> All right. I'm going to tell you right now. Just scanning through these questions. I'm I'm not answering one of them. At least one of them. Um but shockingly, they are Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. I definitely should vet these questions from now on. Um all right, so we'll go through these one at a time because I just keep jumping to the questions that I am not going to read. Uh, so do you find do you find social status to be important in the workplace? Do you find it is justified to be fired over? Maybe not in the sense that everyone can't work with you, but in the sense that you aren't popular. I don't think any workplace in the history of mankind has ever fired you because you're not hip, that you're not popular. Um, so do I think it's important? No, I don't think your social status means anything at work. Get your fucking job done. And that's it. I'm relatively unknown at work. There's people I work with for years who probably don't know my name. I stay relatively quiet and in my own, you know, few people I talk to, like Duncan and, you know, the other people I've streamed with have, have all been co-workers. Uh, but, and I've got a few other people who I don't stream with that I, I talk to fairly regularly at work, but I, I am by no means popular or well-known or like a social butterfly at work. And uh, I've, you know, I'm in no danger of being fired because, you know, your social status means literally nothing at work. As long as you're doing your job, you'll never be fired over not being popular. Uh, so do I think it's justified to be fired over? No. If your boss goes, look, you're you're a great worker, but uh, you just don't have any friends. 
so instead of you know helping that they just fire you that's dumb and never gonna happen if that has ever happened like please by all means present evidence of someone being fired for not being popular enough but uh, that is has never happened Oh, okay. Now this question. This one's in my wheelhouse. Um, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, it. Now they claimed they heard this being asked to another podcast or another streamer, but uh, I don't. I don't believe that. I think they were probably just thinking about it. Um. What's the reason that incest is bad if it's between two consenting adults? Uh, I have a pretty unpopular opinion here, which is uh, I think it's fine. I have no issue with it. Anything two consenting adults do, I couldn't care less what atrocities you're committing. Once that bedroom door is closed, it's not my business. It's not anyone's business. So who the fuck cares what happens? I mean... Obviously, I, I do draw some hard lines on a, on, on a few things, and I don't think anyone is that dumb to know where those lines might fall. But, no, like, I get there might be a little, little beef uh, if they're having kids, and now I'm no geneticist or anyone who knows anything about... Uh, passing genes through genetics but we've all heard the like you know if uh, siblings or uh, relatives of like close bloodline uh procreate that it really fucks the kids up uh so if there is any truth to that which i imagine there is some truth to it i don't know if it's as bad as people think i think some people think like oh if a brother and sister have kids uh that that thing's coming out with eight with you know 800 teeth and then you know and a cyclops i don't think it's that bad uh but, yeah, I, I got no beef with it. If you love a family member, go go to town. Like, I don't... Why would I care? Uh, and if you really want kids, adopt. Um, now, am I going to go as far as saying, like, there should be an incest pride flag? It, no. No, I don't think that. But I definitely don't really see why it's a crime. Because, um, yeah, government's just there to your bedroom. Uh, and the last question is, if an alien race came to Earth, and they could communicate with us and use logic thinking and it was revealed that they could destroy humanity they asked you to give an argument as to why they shouldn't what would it be i can't well I, actually no let's be adults about this i would ask them to present their argument as to why and i would directly you know and I would base what I say off of that, which I know is a real cop, I would answer, but frankly, that that just is the truth. There's, I don't think everyone, like, I don't know if we're worth saving, to be perfectly honest with you. We we do a lot of bad shit on a, on a both on a personal level and a government level on a, society level on a you know environmental level like we are not good we're not a a great race the human race uh so i don't know if i'd tell them anything i think if they presented any reasonable like if they said well we just want to kill you you know don't really have a reason then I might be like, well, go kill those guys on that planet, but that over there, but that'd be really hard to do because uh, we don't know of life on any other planet. 
But if they were like, well, we like Earth. It's a pretty hip-hop and vacation spot, and you guys are just fucking ruining it. I'd be like, yeah, fair point. You should probably just kill everybody. Uh, I don't think I'm the right person to ask that, because sure, there is good in humanity, but the good isn't in power and shows no sign of ever being in power. So, uh, and uh, we can only really do what our leaders do, so, or what our leaders choose to do with our, you know, with our tax money and all that, so, yeah, fucking kill us all, that's what I say. Uh, now, I was hoping that these would be, like, way more, I don't know, hey, I, I mean, I got questions, I can't complain. But uh, I was also hoping I'd have more to say because I'm at like half of what I usually like to record for. But hey, maybe if it's half the length, maybe people will fucking listen to it. Um, in you know, a, a good guy knows when to call it quits, and I would much rather dip out, you know, 40 minutes too soon than stick around for another 40 minutes of just going. Um, uh, because I, I just don't have anything to talk about. Today was a pretty, pretty standard slash subpar week. Like, it, there's nothing to talk about. There wasn't nearly as much news as I thought there was. Uh, half of my, like, little note, uh, just looked like there was a ton of news because it was just writing down all of Doomfist's abilities, which I didn't need to do. We record using a fucking computer. I could have Googled it. Uh, but I guess I'll just uh, talk about the channel for a minute because we did last week and then I put out some tweets about it and it's still kind of up in the air what's going to happen. It, I don't want there to be like a crazy long hiatus, but it sounds like scheduling wise, a, a podcast might be the only thing we have time for for uh, a couple weeks, which is kind of a bummer, but... I'm going to try. That's a big word there because unfortunately with the way my life is and with a roommate and no dedicated recording room and blah, 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 I can't just record games whenever I feel like it. I can really only record when they're not home, which I don't have control over. I'm not going to kick them out of their own apartment. So I'm going to try and squeeze in some kind of some video game content we're i don't think i can on my own do enough to bring us up to a video a day i don't think that's currently in the cards especially where the entirety of next week like i leave uh friday th this coming friday because this will go up on monday and i won't be back until following sunday so and i'm not gonna it's pretty unlikely that i'm gonna be recording while i'm on vacation now i would hope to be able to squeeze in a podcast for each of those weeks but in all honesty i i can't guarantee that either but we'll see i've, I've got someone who has mentioned wanting to be on and uh, hopefully we have a lot to talk about. But, yeah, so basically all I can say is uh, keep keep posted. Uh, I'll try and... If you follow my Twitter or Duncan's Twitter, because anything of note that gets put out will be put out on both of our Twitters, uh, I'm... Check the description because it's in the description. But I'm Metal Gear Whale and Duncan is append gray. So we'll see what we can do. I've got uh, a game or two that I'd like to. All right. I mean, I'll just spill the beans. I've been itching to play Uncharted again, and uh, I could use this lack of content period of while Duncan is away 
as an excuse to play them. Um, and I would like, like, a, I don't know, I by no means need a refresher. I know the Uncharted games uh, pretty well. But with Lost Legacy coming out in August, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's a couple things come stacked on top of each other that I could kind of use as an excuse to play Uncharted. Now, I know, jokingly, a few people have been like, oh, play this game, we'll play that game. And I'm not against playing anything, really. It's just, uh, I can't really afford to buy a game where I'm going on vacation, because that's kind of where all my money is going. So it has to be a game I already own, and shocker, I've played and beat most games I already own. But maybe I'll, I'm sure there's some PlayStation Plus games or something somewhere that I've never played. So maybe I'll look through those, see if there's anything worth checking out. So maybe, maybe I'll do like a little quick look series of me going through the games I've never played before. That actually might be fun. Uh, like a one-offs slash maybe full LP if I really like the game. That could be really fun. Uh, maybe do a bunch of quick looks and then see what people would want to see more of and then even if I didn't nah, if I don't like the game I'm not going back to it but yeah play a bunch and then see if there's something I want to go through the full game because I get that people probably don't want to see me play Uncharted but it's also my channel so I don't give a fuck what you say but uh, a little short this week uh, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, there's half of the crew here, so it's it's about half the length, and that's really, really all I can do. Uh, like I said, follow us on Twitter. That's where everything's going to be. Uh, you can look us up on Twitch, which I don't know how much we're going to be streaming in the future. We're, I think, going to try and do the professional thing and actually get a real capture card because some of the especially the last session of snake pass which was like the last four episodes or something the last three or four episodes of snake pass like some of them hit really low and and also because we i mean it's not a secret we record on twitch we were actually the reason why we don't have any bloodborne content is because we just could not get twitch to work uh, we tried multiple times on multiple days. Just could not get it to work. And that's why currently Bloodborne is on hiatus and is now going to be on you know, even longer hiatus because I don't know when Duncan's free to record next. So, yeah, looking into getting a capture card, hopefully sooner rather than later. I doubt I get one this week. It probably won't be, I guess, ideally capture card for when Duncan and I come back full force. But, uh, yeah. If, if you have uh, questions, uh, it doesn't matter what it's about. It doesn't have to be games. Now, I know games more than I know anything else, really. So, it'd be nice if they're about games. But they don't have to be. Uh, but if you want to if you have your question read on the air and me forget to say your name, and I've closed the email now, so I'm not going to go back, uh, it's powermoosepodcast at gmail.com. Very simple to remember. You go, oh man, I'd really like to send them an email, but what's their email? It's powermoosepodcast at gmail.com. You can, uh, as long as you can remember Gmail, just look at the video, and there's the title right there, Power Moose Podcast. Or it's, uh, there's always just a, a link in the description, too, because people are lazy, uh, myself included. So I figured just, just throw the link. But, yeah, I, I guess that's it, everybody. My my anime recommendation of the week is, uh, yeah, it's going to be go go watch Castlevania. It's, it's pretty all right. Uh, goodbye, and I hope to deliver more quality content next week. <laughs>